Hello everybody and welcome to another lecture on computer architecture. Today I'm going to talk to you about the arithmetic and logic unit or ALU or however you want to pronounce it. Um, this is a result of the integration of the components that we have seen before. So let me show you what components we have been talking about in the last lectures and then I'm going to show you that by uh, combining them we actually get a processing unit the arithmetic and logic unit. So where were we? Let me show you this. We had this basic, I basically talked about these seven uh, components. Remember this? If not, then just go back to this uh, lectures before. It was the MUX, DMUX, decoder, encoder, one bit shifter, comparator and the ripple carry, adder and subtractor. So first of all, the multiplexer, it was like this, that uh, one of the input lines appears on the output. Which one appears on the output depends on the selector lines. So actually we have been treating this in digital uh, systems as an exercise of uh, logic to define a logic array of six inputs, D0 until D3 plus S1 and S0. And we found out with the um, sum of products and the Carnot maps and so on that this actually is the solution. We have here the layer of AND gates and a layer of OR gate and uh, we came up with this. So for instance if uh, S1, S0 is 1, 1, that is binary 3, it means that the input D3 is appearing on the output. If the input D3 is 1, there appears a 0. If the D3 is 0, there appears a, here 0. The others is uh, then don't care. The opposite of this is the demultiplexer or dmux. This is that the data, whatever it is, appears on one of the output lines from Z, Z0 to Z3. Uh, which one, which output it is, it depends on S1 and S0, the selector lines. So if, for instance, if this is 1, 0, that is binary uh, 2, then the output D appears on Z2 and the others are all 0. Okay, we didn't know what it was useful for, but we will see in a moment what this is good for. Uh, we also had a decoder. A decoder is uh, something that um, puts an output on one of the output lines, on one of the, we call it signal lines, um, and which one is uh, going to be asserted, is going to be one, depends on these two selector lines. Imagine if I put here 0, 1, that is binary 1, it means that Z1 will be 1, and the, other, the others will be zero. And this, I already promised, was something to do. We're going to use it like a chip select or something like this, that we can enable the output of a memory element or something like this. All the other chips will be uh, disconnected, will not talk to the bus, and one chip will actually be enabled and will be connected to the communication bus. I already uh, was talking about this, and we will see this also in future lectures, how that works. Uh, the opposite of this is the encoder. It tells which of the input lines is uh, 1. So for instance, if D2 is 1 and all the other ones are 0, the output will be 1, 0, because that is binary 2. Then I also said to you about some processing uh, logics, like for instance this 1-bit shifter. It shifts either left or right depending on the uh, control bit. If the input uh, control bit R equals 1, then the bit pattern appearing on the D terminals is shifted to the right. In case it is 0, this bit pattern is shifted to the left. And of course, the hole that is being uh, created is um, filled with a 0, as I explained to you. I also showed you this uh, comparator. And the comparator is actually, it takes four, in this case it's four bit, it takes four, uh, two four bit uh, input patterns and uh, treats this as a number and then determines if A uh, is larger than B, if A equals to B, or if A is smaller than B. And in this case, we can already recognize our uh, patterns or our higher programming languages, like uh, maybe basic, is the if then. Uh, else uh, and if then go to uh, because for that we need uh, normally we need comparisons if a is larger than b then do something so for that we need comparators and this is the basic ingredient of um, the processor and as we will see 
and also in MIPS, we have seen this in assembly. They also exist, uh, these kind of things, because we had uh, uh, things like uh, brands on equal and brands on not equal and brands on greater than and uh, brands on less than. So for that, you need uh, comparators. You need comparisons. And this logic hardware is actually uh, performing this kind of uh, logic. Finally, we also have here the uh, ripple carry adder and subtractor. Remember how this works? You just uh, by uh, linking, in this case, four full adders together, you can uh, make an adder uh, adding four bits to another four bits. Uh, four bits A, four bits B, and this uh, ripple carry adder is then generating output, which is the sum of A and B, treating them as binary numbers. And because of this trick, that we uh, know that if we use um, two's complement numbers, then we can also use the same hardware to do subtraction by inverting all the bits of B and uh, putting the first carry in and making that one. Then we know that this uh, ripple carry adder becomes a ripple carry subtractor. Very nice. Uh, finally, I also want to know to uh, tell you that actually when you are shifting, when you shift to the right, Actually, it is a division by two. And if you shift to the left, it is a multiplication by two. So you can already um, recognize here that we can also do multiplications, especially when we have this kind of multiplications by two and use this adder uh, or subtractor structure, then we can uh, actually make any multiplication uh, in uh, with, with, our, with this hardware. So these are the seven components, which are basically the seven uh, basic ingredients, uh, three which are doing the arithmetic and the logic, and the other four which are actually doing the communication, the, the selection of what uh, what signal will be uh, will be communicated. So let's join them together in what is called the arithmetic logic unit. And I have here then I've done exactly this. This is just an example, classic example from literature. It is uh, doing four operations and selecting one of these operations, the output of one of these operations here uh, at the output by this multiplexer. So the uh, just as an example, I've taken here four uh, operations, uh, taking two input, input um, uh, operands. So actually what I have here is a one bit arithmetic and logic unit. It takes uh, two one bit values and performs an operation and then put this one bit result on the output. So the input uh, lines are A and B. It also has a carry. Uh, that is then another input. What it is doing, these four operations are AND, so A and B, or A or B, not A. And this one is our friend, the full adder. So that would be A plus B. And don't forget the carry. Now, one of them, it's they're all constantly calculated. And one of them is produced, is copied to the output. Which one will be produced? Uh, which of these four is produced by the output? That is uh, determined by this multiplexer. Our friend, the multiplexer from the previous uh, picture. So which one uh, then is determined by these selector lines? Remember, multiplexer, selector, selector lines, one of these four outputs, inputs is appearing on the output. Now these selector lines, I will now call the opcode for, because it selects which of these operations performed on these two operands is appearing on the output. So this we call the operation code or simply opcode. So we can already recognize the things from our MIPS assembly programming. Here we have the opcode, here we have the operands, and here we have the operations. One of the operations is appear the output of the result of one of the operations is appearing on the output, which one is determined by the opcode. Now it's a little bit strange, of course, that it's constantly performing all operations, and only one of, uh, will be will be uh, saved, will be further processed. It's a little bit of a waste of uh, effort, one would say. But uh, this is just an example. Uh, in modern computers, of course, not always all operations are performed. Uh, but now uh, let me, oh yeah, I wanted to give you here an example. Imagine that we put here uh, one and uh, zero and we select, let's see, let's select the opcode one, one. 
which would be um, which would be the operation and and so one one this is one and zero this is zero this is one or zero that is one this is not one that is zero and uh, let's put this one let's put here no carry in for the moment uh, one and zero that is one and the carry is zero so this one go directly now um, we have here zero goes here one goes here zero goes here one goes here but which of this this one goes on the output well one one we have here one one so actually it was it was this one was going to appear on the output remember because here we have one zero so this one will be zero anyway because we already have a zero here and this one was uh, zero one so this is also not this one it will be zero and this one will also be zero so this one will be copied to the output what is it zero so this is or 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 and that is uh, zero as you can see what am i going to do now i'm going to link four of those one bit uh, arithmetic and logic units and make a ripple carry arithmetic and logic unit so it's the same trick we used for the ripple carry adder we now have the ripple carry arithmetic and logic unit uh, all receive the same i wanted to put here red it doesn't allow me to put here red i want it here blue okay blue I was selecting here with operation code one one, which was which was end. Remember, and of course all uh, one bit arithmetic and logic units receive the same operation code. It doesn't make sense that one would do something else than the other. So they all do will do ending. This one will do ending with the least significant bit, and this one will do ending with the most significant bit. So uh, this one anyway didn't uh, matter, but. Um, it is going to be performed uh, the, but and the carry will be produced but maybe it will be later in later stages ignore, ignored i had here let's see i put here one zero let me put it uh, let me put it something like this one zero one zero one zero so this one actually is doing ending one one and zero um, that is zero or let me put here a little bit uh, different one and one one and one that is one one and zero that is zero and one and zero that is zero and it's also performing the adding which would be uh, well i'm not even going to to, to 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 do this because it doesn't matter so much at this stage so you see that in this case by adding four one bit arithmetic and logic units i made a four bit arithmetic and logic a unit so um, you see this is actually the central processing unit of the our computer it's not called the central processing unit but the uh, arithmetic and logic unit because the central processing unit actually also has next to it the registers the flip-flops where the information is stored locally to the arithmetic and logic unit and it has for instance things like the program counter and the instruction register but that we will see in the next lecture when i will talk about the central processing unit this was just about the arithmetic and logic unit which is doing the basic uh, arithmetic and logic operations so see you in the next lecture